Hello everyone, my name is Taylor. And I am Ray. And this is the third episode in a row where we are trapped in Vorador's mansion, yes. And that's Peyton. In the last two episodes, we have been trying an experiment where we had you guys like the video as much as possible and leave tons of comments. And how did that turn out? Uh, it didn't seem to make any difference at all, except I got some really good breakfast ideas. Thanks, guys. Ah, uh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, I was kind of skeptical about it in the first place. Like, you know, when a guy gets up there and he's essentially kind of like a YouTube clown and he's just like, oh, yeah, no, likes and stuff are now important. It's not super reliable information. So what is it that we're supposed to do exactly? Uh, uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. What YouTube is trying to get us to do is kill ourselves. So we're probably not really going to do that. I can see where that would get lots of clicks, though. Yes. Right. You must consent to being in the bikini when we put you in the casket. No, no, because I can only kill myself once, and YouTube wants everyone to come back to watch me kill myself every day. Ah, so we'll have to commit a new murder every day. And then bury them in a bikini. Well, yes, I guess that would be a... Uh, well, actually, I think that one would get banned for violence. No, no, no. Don't try to talk us out of it this way. <laughs> this is the most excited I've ever been for YouTube systems. You were having a lot of trouble with this little jumping bit. Well, it is a system of elevated plungers. I can't... I, who is this designed for? Well, you know what's the most horrible about this? Vampires die when they touch water, so this is essentially a death trap trying to kill anyone not nimble enough to get across normally. Well, not originally. I mean, this place wasn't originally flooded. Okay, but anyway, though, not to leave any bad taste in anyone's mouth, I want to point out... That, because of the way that YouTube works now, they're not really looking to bring a lot of support to us. So, you guys who watch our stuff and who have been keeping up with us all this time, when you share our stuff on Reddit or you show your friends because you like our content and things like that, you guys are legitimately the ones who are keeping us going and helping us grow. And for those of you guys who are doing that, I sincerely thank you. It means a lot. But you did waste all your time posting all those comments, yes. No, I read them all. We also wasted our time on all those comments, yes. No, they were good. A huge thanks. I appreciate all the breakfast suggestions. I did actually follow those, and uh, I have another request uh, as far as comments go. Like, it won't actually promote the channel, but I really need a gift idea for Christmas. Oh, for who? Nobody, don't worry about it. Okay, but this person, they like movies, but they already have all the movies they want, but they also like chocolate, but they said not to buy them chocolate because they'll eat all the chocolate. Uh, it is a female, so I need like a gift idea and I don't have very many. I found the part of the key that was a triangle. Don't buy me chocolate, Ray. You're gonna get fat and you're gonna like it. Oh, is this for Taylor? Yes. Maybe buy her a sense of childlike wonderment. Yes. I don't need a sense of childlike wonderment. I have... I... like... I have the TV. No, you don't. You canceled your cable, like... I don't... I, I, did you ever own cable? No. I mean I have the internet. Yes. Because as we all know... No one needs a sense of childlike wonderment or, or a soul to use the internet. No, in fact, I think it helps to not have a sense of childlike wonderment when you're on the internet. Well, the internet answers all the questions now. How do you believe in Santa if it just tells you he's not real? Oh, you remember when we were talking about Raziel having a kid? Raziel boy? Wouldn't it be kind of interesting, actually, to have a kid following you around? You'd get some lore going on. Like whether they believe in Santa? Yeah, or you'd find out what the equivalent of Santa is. Giant Nazgoth clam, yes. Yeah, the giant Nazgoth clam delivers all the presents on Christmas. I got news, kid. The giant Nazgoth clam is dead. Mobius killed him. No, that's not true. Then how did I get presents in my room? Your parents dressed up as a giant clam and put them there. Taylor, did your parents dress up as Santa? My parents just made me go to bed and then put the toys out. Well, no. But I mean, people dressed up as Santa. If there were malls in Nazgoth, yes. You could go and sit on a person dressed as a giant clam and tell them what you want for gifts. I imagine a world similar to our own, with a giant clam drinking soda as a promotional thing. Oh, but it's not actually the giant Nazgoth clam. It's like the brother of the giant Nazgoth clam. He was fatter and therefore more approachable. I don't know. I feel like it's too easy if we draw too close of a parallel to real Santa. Like, giant Nazgoth clam's gotta have his own lore. It's a clam. What kind of clam lore do you come up with? It's a magical clam that produced Mobius's magical anti-vampire staff. Maybe the clam had parents that were killed by vampires and it swore an oath of vengeance. That would fit with the setting, yes. Yeah, he used to slide down the chimneys, the vampire kids' chimneys, and he would turn them into coal and then give them to good kids who were human. I thought coal was the bad gift. No, it's a very practical gift that parents would be happy to have 
and kids should learn to appreciate practical things. Nosgoth is a harsher world, yes. Yes, every day is a day you're thankful you're not a vampire. Or, you're thankful that you are a vampire and you really wish people would leave you alone. Vampire pride, yes. Also, recluse pride, yes. It's a competitive world being a vampire, especially when a giant clam keeps climbing down the chimney to turn you into coal. There were dark times in Nazgoth. Saint Nazgoth clam. Or, they were good times if you weren't a vampire. Well, okay, so we would learn from Raziel Boyd that everyone loved and worshipped the Nazgoth clam unless you were a vampire. But what about their other holidays, though? Do they have, like, an Easter bunny or something equivalent to that? Uh, you know, we don't, like, see a lot of animals like bunnies. We don't see cute things in this series. Maybe there was an Easter crow. Why would there be Easter? Yes, unless there was Vampire Jesus. Well, I don't know, because Christmas was like a pagan holiday celebrated in a lot of places. I mean, they became religious holidays, so you can assume that people would celebrate the winter and spring and then attribute that however they wanted. You know, the Easter crow leaving eggs for you to find would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? No, because crows are protective of eggs, yes. Yeah, crows would get angry if you tried to steal their eggs. Okay, so then what does the crow leave out on Easter? Baby bunnies, for you to kill and eat. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Fun for the children, yes. Seems like baby bunnies would spoil, though. That's why I said kill and eat. They're alive, so they stay fresh. Where do your parents buy baby bunnies from? The grocery store, duh. For a moment, it struck me how strange it was to use ancient weapons as a key. But then I remembered how I've been using the Reaver repeatedly. You know, that is a weird pattern, isn't it? In the previous game, we were stealing shields and stuff from zombies. But in this game, we're gathering weapons, so clearly they use martial items as keys. I figure, you know, they defeated their enemies, and they can kill everything else with their bare hands, so they sat around looking at these things, and they were like, well, these are all full of magic, so what do you want to do with them? And some bright guy was like, oh, I know, keys for doors. Swords into plowshares, basically. You know, that is why the Human Rebellion works so good, yes. It is because all the keys to every door was an ancient soul drinker spear, and they gave them to the humans so the humans could get around, yes! Actually, that would be super obvious, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, all our ancient doors unlock using these mighty destructive weapons. We trust you, the humans, to not abuse that. I hereby bestow upon you the mantle of Head Chef. To get into the pantry, you will need the Sword of Unyielding Agony. Also, here's the key to your bedroom, the Dagger of Smiting Vampires. Oh yes, and here's how you get into the library? The Orb of Disabling Vampires? We made it from the giant Nosgoth clam, yes? Yeah, it is It is not a wonder that the ancient race was destroyed. Poor ancient race. Undone by their own desire for peace. Well, maybe they should have, and hear me out on this, actually beat their swords into plowshares. Like, what do you mean? Turn them into not swords? Yeah, just, you know maybe reforge them into keys. Taylor, do you know how lame that is? Yes, those weapons had so much the legacy. Yeah, yeah, you can't just turn swords into plowshares, literally. Think of tradition, yes. Yeah, and, and a good sword is really expensive. You couldn't even dream of just like throwing it away in a closet. But that is almost exactly what they did. Yeah, but it's a key, so it's safe and for a purpose now. Here I was able to find an undefiled depiction of the prophetic murals. And upon them, the image of the great adversary was clear. He was a skeletal figure, with burning eyes and a burning sword, and... Oh, god damn it! it was me! And the vampire lord, it was Cain! God damn it! God damn it, Mobius was right about everything! The ancient race was f***ing stupid! F***ing stupid ancient race, god damn it! Poor Raziel, burned again by destiny. You know, everyone is working on a higher level than Raziel, but I really feel like he brings this on himself a lot of time. Like, what if he was just an honest guy who would listen to a well-reasoned argument? Then everyone wouldn't have to be constantly giving him this reverse psychology runaround. Aw, oh, but the reverse psychology runaround is part of what makes it fun, yes. No, for the series, I mean, like, as far as the writing goes, it is. But if Raziel would just calm down and just be like, all right, yeah, tell me your thing, tell me why I should help, and then he helped people, he would be, <laughs> he would be at least less stressed out. Well, but this is why people like the anti-hero, though. Because the anti-hero isn't doing things for the right reasons, he's doing it for his Raziel reasons. If Raziel were a nice guy, then whenever someone tricked him, it would be a malicious trick virtually every time. But as it is, sometimes when Raziel gets tricked, it's for the greater good. Well, no, what's really crazy is when people trick him because they've been tricked into thinking the greater good lies with tricking Raziel. Like, there's layers upon layers of this crazy trickery. That's the intrigue of the series, though, isn't it? Everybody is 100% self-interested. Almost nobody is in this for any of the right reasons. Well, no, I, I think some... I, uh, 
Janos, I think, is in it for the right reasons. He's the guardian of the sword that will consume Raziel. And when Raziel showed up to be like, hey man, I'm here for my sword, Janos didn't stop him. He tried to hand it to him. Yeah, but somebody tricked Janos because somebody was led to believe that it was for the greater good for Janos to be tricked. Janos was too honest, yes. He could not be trusted. Okay, okay, so let's go back then to Soul Reaver 2, where we were going to get the Reaver, and the Hilden showed up to stop him. Were they trying to stop Raziel because he was their hero and they wanted to save him? Or what? No, 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 listen, kid, when I was your age, we didn't run around with a magical demon sword or anything. We, we made everything on our own time. And that's why we're gonna zap you with lasers! Okay, what did they really say? Nothing, they just rambled about how death is a transitionary period and da-da-da-da-da. It wasn't important. None of these dialogues have ever been important, yes. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, you would think that these ancient guardians would be a great opportunity for some exposition and some chat, but for some reason they don't go for it. I guess because it would give away too many secrets if you could just straight up ask the questions. I guess, but I mean, everything's shrouded in prophecy, and only the Guardian of Time should know anything. Well, maybe he still does. Have we run into the guy? I don't know. They're all just skeletons with wings, and... And even so, I don't remember anything like that being a deal. Well, again, he would just give away everything. He'd be like, oh yeah, you want to know about the prophecy? Yeah, I made the prophecy. No, because the Elder Squid told him not to give stuff away. So he'll just be like, I can't tell you anything, you suck. Speaking of you suck, right? You have to dodge the ball of lightning, yes. There's a bunch of stuff moving around on screen. Uh, it's like, this is not a super flexible combat system. Actually, on the note of sucking, I kind of wanted to talk more about the weapons and stuff. Namely the fact that they have an elaborate series of locks to hide the weapons in the first place. And, you know, like, what if they needed the weapons? Or what if they needed to get into the temple? Yeah, it's a bit of cartoon logic, isn't it? Like when they say, break glass if need for hammer, and then you use a hammer to break the glass and you pull out a smaller hammer? Exactly. Like, wouldn't it make more sense if somebody was just carrying those weapons around, like they were a boss fight? So instead of doing this, you got to fight some kind of creature that was carrying those spears. I feel like the boss fights didn't really pan out so well in this game, though. Like, this is okay, and I'm clearly having a hard time, but it's mostly because there's just balls of fluff flying around on the screen and hitting me. Here's your dodge button, right? Yes! I'm using the dodge button, but I have to attack them when there's an opening. Raziel attacks in melee. There's no other option but to just get up close and, and hope for the best. You have to do the timing, right? Wait for the opening, yes! You do the timing, you wait, but there's no opening. Like, it just it depends on where they're located, and sometimes they're throwing stuff at me from off screen. How am I supposed to know how to dodge that? Well, there's only one guy now, so you're fine. But anyway, though, uh, it turns out that Raziel is the nemesis, and he's not supposed to actually be imbuing the Reaver. So what's all this about, do you think? I don't know. What's any of it about at this point? I guess Kane would be the one who's supposed to be imbuing the Reaver, but Raziel can do it too because he is the Reaver. Is anyone really on Raziel's side? Yes. I think Kane sort of is, but only because he thinks that Raziel is on his side. It's just kind of weird how the Hilden have come across as this major detriment for Raziel. Like, they've been in his way, they've made his progress more difficult. Yeah, but they can't kill him. I don't know, I think a lot of it is because of Blood Omen 2, which some people have decided is not a canon part of the series. Didn't we talk about this once before? Yes? Yeah, but it's been a while, and to bring it up again, the thing about Blood Omen 2 was that it brought back Vorador, even though he died in the first game, and did a lot of stuff that didn't make any sense. It was made by a separate team than the one that did Soul Reaver 2, and there was a little bit of miscommunication, and in the end, they kind of had to reconcile the two games together. Which was really hard, because Blood Omen 2 kind of just made up its own stuff. Like, there was no regard for continuity. None of the stuff that happened in Soul Reaver 1 could have been possible if Blood Omen 2 was true. Because Vorador was back, and the Hilden were a thing, and, and just... Uh, like, Kane woke up, and I don't know, it's, it's super weird. So what, do you think the writers just kind of threw their hands up, and made something up off the top of their heads? Maybe a little bit? I don't think we ever resolved how Vorador managed to stay alive, because that was like a really big scene in the original Blood Omen. You did it, guys! I did it! I killed the guy! You didn't kill him, you turned him into the Spirit of Water. Yeah, Spirit of Water. And, uh, yeah, on that note, I guess here is a good place to go ahead and stop for now. So thanks for playing with us, everybody! We'll catch you all next time! On our way out, just one more reminder that the best way to support us again is off YouTube on Patreon. Or, uh, yeah, you could just hang out. We have, like, a Tumblr and a Twitter and stuff. I Sometimes we post pictures. Naked pictures, yes! No, no regular. <laughs> they're, they're safe for work. But otherwise, we hope you guys had a good time and you have a good day.